uh, and so to Knox. Uh, and I've tried um, to have something in the lecture that will inform experts, and uh, it is with some trepidation I say that, because there are many experts in the audience and people from the Isle of Man as well. Um, but I've also very much pitched it for everyone, so if you don't know about Knox, it's also pitched there, so do bear, bear with me, but I hope I've got new things for everyone in, in the lecture. And the lecture's centered around the exhibition, so we do focus on the metalwork and jewelry, but from Knox's point of view, probably that was a relatively short period of his life, maybe six years, so we absolutely talk about his whole career as an artist and, and the biographical aspects, and then, of course, his legacy. Um, but before I, before I get into those areas, I did want to address the issue of Knox, the ghost designer, which is a term maybe Liam coined or we've coined, and answer the question, what it is that makes Knox special? Uh, and to do that in a way uh, which is beyond simply asserting that his work is incredibly beautiful and modern, which I regularly assert, um, but really try and have an objective measure of his greatness. Um, so for my first slide, and I promise you it's the only graph, uh, I've done a graph, and uh, what this does is um, I've gone back in time to 1900, and it's the 1900 version of trending, uh, no Twitter or Facebook, of course, but what I've done is search a database that has all uh, the periodicals and journals of the arts uh, area and the architectural area from around 1900. Uh, and I've gone through those and searched across the major uh, people of the period. And what you'll see is, perhaps predictably, William Morris, founder of the arts and crafts movement, Van der Velt, say arguably founder of the Art Nouveau movement, 700 odd hits. And you go through Tiffany, Voise, Lalique, names that trip off the tongue. Liberty is there with about 300. Macintosh, surprisingly low, but still a good mark at 150. I put uh, Oliver Baker in. He is a watercolorist whose pictures now sell for about 50 pounds and who was the second designer of metalwork behind Knox. He got 26 mentions and Archibald Knox got six mentions. And that is a measure. So when we talk about the ghost designer now today, if you put uh, some other objective measures, and I'll come on to this of value, Knox with Van der Velt, maybe with Boris, would be at this end of the spectrum. And I want to really talk about why that is. So firstly, there is objective testimony on Knox from reasonably uh, authoritative sources. So Mervyn Levy, who wrote the book on liberty, not the book on Knox, uh, talked about a designer of genius who ranks with the great his great contemporaries what Macintosh was to furniture, Knox was to the design of silver and jewelry. We certainly feel the same, and that will be a theme I draw out later. Um, and then Anthony Jones, who is a, is a serious academic, which uh, Martin Levy was a, a journalist author, uh, talked about Knox's work, um, the Celtic Art Nouveau, how he moved then into a Celtic modernism and, and was this adventurous modernist on a par with all the, those great designers. And again, I'll come on to that as well later. And I put together this slide just to uh, hopefully get everyone excited before we really get going. And it's a timeline of three of these great designers, keeping in mind Knox was never known in his time. And you see Charles Ashby, founder of the Guild of Handicraft, doing this classic, um, we could have a timeline back to the 17th century here, but a covered cup, uh, 1896, that was considered very modern, hugely influential on the whole secession in Austria and Vienna and modernism uh, that bore of that. At the other extreme, 1902, just six, seven years later, you've got Joseph Hossmann, something really pretty modern, by any measure a remarkable piece for 1902 uh, and recognized as such. But in the middle, you have Archibald Knox, and uh, this piece, of course, is a Liberty piece. It's really an Archibald Knox piece. And you have uh, the title, I think, of the exhibition encapsulated in this. This is the designer who got beauty and modernity. Perhaps on the right is maybe more modernity. On the left, I'll say more beauty or certainly wonderful silversmithing. And in the middle, you've got both. Uh, and that is where we, we think Knox needs to be positioned or should be positioned. <laughs> 